What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my weapon showcase for The Last Faith. Now, the main reason I wanted to do a weapon showcase is not only are the weapons super cool in this game with their various transformation attacks, but they are quite expensive to level up. On average, to get a weapon all the way up to plus 10, you're going to be spending over 100,000 of the primary resource that we can farm. Uh, and on top of that, in terms of the unique upgrade mats, there is a fairly limited amount of those in the game. To clarify this, we have two types of upgrade mats. We have Moon Silver and Demi Shade, and Moon Silver we can buy an infinite amount of from the blacksmith. However, Demi Shade, which is used to upgrade unique weapons, there is a limited amount available in a playthrough, and on average, you're going to have enough to upgrade one weapon up to max level. Now, I say on average because there is Demi Shade that you can purchase from various merchants, and if you find every Demi Shade on the map and purchase all the Demi Shade available, you'll probably come out with enough to get a second weapon upgraded. But in general, you should plan on only being able to upgrade one unique weapon just because of how rare this resource is. So, with that in mind, we are going to be showcasing all of the weapons available in the game, as well as talking about their damage at max stat levels. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I've gone ahead and modded this save up after finishing the game, so all of my damage stats are at 55 across the board, and this will give us a uh, basically a nice accurate test being able to show off what weapons are capable of when we hit roughly the soft caps of those damage stats, which in my testing at least was right around 50 to 55. So to start, we have the Nightfall Blade. This is the starting weapon. It goes up to S scaling in dexterity. You can see over there on the right hand side, this gets up to 491 weapon damage. Pretty simple moveset here, that's relatively fast. We have a charge attack, it's going to have a little bit of forward momentum, and then the unique attack will transform it into a spear that we can stab multiple times by pressing the button. Uh, in terms of spoilers, we're also not going to be showing where to find every one of these weapons, but I will be naming the zones you can find them in so that you can jot that down and have an idea of where to hunt for them later. In terms of fight, we have this uh, its kind of a late game area, but with enemies that you have seen earlier in the game. So we're going to be using them as kind of our uh, test dummies here to show off what the weapons are capable of. Moving on from there, we have the first strength weapon of the game, and that is the Skull Cleaver. Now the Skull Cleaver is found pretty early in the Broken Pass region. This gets up to A scaling strength and we have a total attack power of 689 on it. Nice little jump with a little bit of AoE on that weapon. Moving on from there, we have the weapon that I used for the majority of my own playthrough, the Night Tide's Route. Now, the Night Tide's Route is a whip. It gets up to A scaling dexterity, D scaling in mind. It comes out to 454 attack damage with 55 55. And the unique attack on this is pretty strong. It creates like a, a rain of, of knives that come on down. Um, now, one thing that's worth noting here is any weapon that doesn't have split attack on it, like any weapon that's pure physical, you can of course enchant with stuff like uh, darkness or fire, whatever the case is. And one of the really nice benefits of the whip is that that attack also applies to the special. So when you do this, all that rain will also apply darkness or fire or frost or whatever the case is, which is a really strong use case for this weapon. Definitely one of the, the more unique things, and certainly one of the things that made it so powerful for me in my playthrough is you know, I'd enchant the whip with fire, do that, and frequently get burned off on enemies. It also has an absolutely insane attack range on it. I really, really like the whip planning on a dexterity playthrough definitely can't go wrong with it uh, and that is in a hidden room of uh, in the city of Mithrigal so pretty early on in the game uh, moving on from there we have the blunder blade the blunder blade is our first weapon with some instinct scaling this is purchased from the blacksmith who you also rescue from Mithrigal 
and it gets up to a total of 476. Pretty basic moveset. But the unique here is like a gun blade combo. You can do infinitely, so pretty cool. Not my favorite weapon. One downside of this is obviously you're expending both your focus and your bullets to, to use this. Uh, now from there, we get access to our next strength weapon, and actually one of the best weapons in the game, the Ethereal Great Blade. This is found down in the Drowned Crypt. It's up to S scaling in strength. And at 55 strength, this has a whopping 1,092 attack power. Very, very strong weapon. One of the few weapons that's going to hit over 1,000 AR. A unique attack on it. Very devastating. And it has a little bit of AoE on it as well. Moving on from there, we have a, another elemental weapon, the Storm Chaser Mace Whip. Now this is a A scaling strength, C scaling instinct, and this is going to be a split damage between physical and electric. It's up to 792 AR. Pretty interesting weapon, I think it's actually the only electric weapon in the game. This one is found in the Esk Mansion region. The unique attack we can hit multiple times to fall down a thunderbolt, which is pretty cool. And before we wrap up this video, towards the end, I'll also uh, detail out the various status effects and what they do. Moving on from there, we get our first mind weapon, which is... Where did it go? There we go. The Spinal Chain Blade. This is uh, C scaling strength, A scaling mind. It gets up to 965 AR. Pretty cool. It's like a great sword, but a little bit quicker. And the unique attack on this is also a multi hit that finishes with a darkness, uh, this flame log. this from the liturgical pass region moving on from there to one of my favorite weapons the severance reaper now even though this is c strength and b dexterity this thing is actually crazy uh, i had I, I outclassed my whip without anything in strength using this in my own playthrough i had like 18 strength and 55 decks uh, very very powerful weapon you find this in the damn rules of the Ocean's fortress Kind of burial blade esque, but very, very fast attack on that, getting up to 840 damage on this. And the crazy thing is that that damage on the fast attack is what makes this so devastating. Gonna come over here, I can kill you instantly. So you're just absolutely shredding with that thing. Very, very strong weapon. Uh, in the ruins, it's actually all the way to like the top left of the map. So, key one to find. Uh, coming on from there, we have the Ilthgarth Boreal Blade. This is a split scaling weapon with C strength, C dexterity, and B in mind. Uh, this was another weapon that I really liked in my playthrough. 688 on the total AR. And this comes from the Starlight Beast, which is a hidden boss near the Frozen Caverns. From the Frozen Caverns, you need to find the Moonshade Lake, and then there you'll find a boss. But pretty basic moveset with the sword. And then when we enchant it, it's going to apply Frost to the blade. 
And then on top of that, we can do a secondary attack after it's been enchanted and send out frost waves that are very, very strong. See, one of the crazy things about the, uh, the frost waves on this thing is that they will actually climb objects. So if I use it here, for example, notice how it'll climb up that wall. So very, very potent weapon. And the, uh, the freeze potential of it is incredibly high. Even the, the strongest non-immune enemies in the game are usually getting frozen in two hits from that. So bosses, that is a, a different story, sadly. Moving on from there, and this one I don't remember exactly when it unlocks, but the Fire Striker Blade. Now this is the highest instinct scaling weapon in the game at B Instinct, C Dex, and D Strength. This is also purchased from the blacksmith, but I don't remember exactly when we unlock it. I want to say it was sometime after the, the Damned Ruins, right around the time we get to the, the Regent Palace. Uh, but we have a 757 AR on this. Pretty basic regular moveset. Charge attack. Now the unique, we can hold it and do a flamethrower. And then after it's been enchanted with flame, we can then send out these flaming blasts. So pretty cool weapon. The, the flaming blasts are, are very potent, similar to how we were getting instant freezes with the other one. Uh, once this is enchanted, you can see those flames are instantly burning enemies. Took two hits to get the, uh, the big vampire guy with it. really like the the flame effect on that weapon it's one of the cool looking ones and like i said this is purchased from the blacksmith i don't remember exactly when uh, but my advice would be right around the time you get to the the damned ruins or the regent palace which is pretty late game just check the blacksmith periodically and eventually he's going to have this one for sale moving on from there to the last one you can find organically the holy winged axe now this is one of the strongest weapons in the game going up to a strength and d mind this has a ar of 10 10 on it very very strong weapon if you're playing strength build this would be my recommended unique weapon probably one of the cooler unique attacks in the game very fast with an aoe that combos off of it I know I haven't been showing uh, jump attacks, but they're all, jump attacks are pretty basic. There's no like in-air jump combos. If you have double jump, you might be able to get out two attacks, but you know, nothing really special about about us. Uh... I really, really like the AOE on that. I'm probably going to do another playthrough with with uh, as a strength build, and this is going to end up being one of my go-tos. Now, the last two weapons we're going to be showcasing are Devourer and Rift. Uh, Devourer gets up to S Scaling Mind, D Dexterity. This goes up to 761. Now, these two weapons are unique in that there are side quests attached to them. In particular, with this weapon, uh, the region we're in right now, Mithringal, there are uh, multiple crypts hidden throughout Mithringal that have little skulls. And when you attack the skulls, it's going to light up at a crypt. There are four in total. You're not going to be able to complete this until after you have the double jump ability. Uh, but once you do, find all of those little crypts, and then you go to the main crypt. It's going to take you down into an area, and you'll be able to get access to this blade, which is the Darkness Katana. The unique on this, the EI Slash that then creates a Darkness Explosion. all of your weeb fantasies if you don't dash off screen trying to use it and the very last weapon we can get access to is the rift of blood uh, now this is a very similar quest line you can see this one goes up to CBD very very strong weapon getting up to 953 this is a heavy katana uh, and similar to the devourer this is also a quest line over in the uh, the ruins of the osseous fortress region there are four different bloody chalices that you need to fill and upon acting all of those there's a hidden crypt that you can go into 
receive a bunch of loot and this katana, very similar to the crypt that gets you the devourer. And this is a blood infused weapon, whereas the other one is darkness infused. I believe this is the only blood infused weapon in the game. I know there's a couple unique use cases for status weapons. In terms of status, we have uh, Holy Winged Axe is Split Frost as well as Burial Blade. This is our only electric. Uh, darkness, we have Spinal Chain Blade and Devourer of the Betrayed. And then Rift of Blood is our only bleed weapon. Now, talking about the status effects briefly before we wrap up. So we have uh, four different statuses to be aware of. Uh, fire damage can eventually build up the burn status, which is going to be a damage over time tick that is HP percentage based. For enemies that are not immune to it, it's actually very, very strong. Like strong enough that you could get burn on an enemy and essentially run away for a little bit and it will build up and take them on out for you. Uh, electrocuted is going to inflict a stun on enemies periodically that they're not going to recover from from a short duration. Uh, in general, bosses are pretty much completely immune to Electrocute because of how strong it is, but it is great for the sake of progression. Bleeding will cause enemies to take 20% increased incoming damage, and on top of that, if they try to dodge, they take damage, which is only really relevant against humanoid opponents, but pretty strong just because you are getting a flat increase to your damage potential. Frozen is going to gradually slow enemies down until it puts them in a frozen state where they can't move whatsoever. In terms of farming, I think Frozen is, is actually one of the, the best in the game, just because it locks down enemies, makes them very easy to kill. And then lastly, we have Nightmare Damage, which is going to be a damage over time effect similar to like a poison. Uh, but one of the unique things about it is while enemies are inflicted with Nightmare and taking that dark damage, it's actually going to restore your focus. Uh, additionally, an important thing to note with the, the weapons is that with uh, unique weapons, you can't actually put anything on them. And what I mean by that is our, our stuff like this. So our, our uh, what, are we, what is it called exactly? Our Dark Tears Powder, which applies dark to a weapon. We can do that on regular weapons, but not on unique weapons. So any weapons that already have an element built into them, you're not going to be able to use that powder, uh, which in general does add a, a pretty nice chunk of damage to the weapon. So something to keep in mind. But like I said, you're only really going to find enough materials to consistently get one of these up to max unless you're completely scouring the map. Uh, whether they, they add an infinite source of them later or something, that's something we'll find out down the line. Uh, but either way, we're going to wrap things up here. Definitely a lot of different weapons to choose from. You know, it's not something that we, we typically see in Metroidvanias. It's usually, here's your weapon, stick with it. Uh, but I really like the variety here. But either way... Figure out which weapon you like the best. If it is one of the unique ones, make sure you save the majority of your demi shade to get that one up to max. And the regular stuff, we can just buy the materials from the blacksmith so you can level up all those if you want pretty easily. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will catch y'all with the full series.